Cat Williams got a lot of attention for his recent interview with Shannon Sharp, but one person's not gotten enough attention for that interview in my estimation, and that's Mr. Sharp himself. Hey there, I'm Joshua Johnson. I am a journalist, a broadcaster with more than 20 years experience. I've been an anchor on NBC and on MSNBC. I've been a national host for NPR. Used to host a show called 1A, which had 4 million listeners every week on more than 300 NPR member stations across the country. So I know interviewing. I know journalism. And that's why I need to talk to Shannon Sharp. If that interview was a football game, he kind of fumbled the whole way. Personally, I think he needs a new playbook. Before I say anything else, let me just be clear. I am not here to hate on Shannon Sharp. I like Shannon Sharp. I love Cat Williams. I am mad at nobody. But as a journalist, having watched the interview, I came away from it feeling very irritated. Not only that he let Cat Williams run wild in the interview, but also later that he kind of shirked responsibility for playing harder and doing better because he's not a journalist. Shannon is not a journalist. If you want 60 Minutes, if you want Dateline, mm -hmm. if you want uh, 48 Hours, right. go to those places and get those type of interviews. Right. Go to Lester Holt. Go mm -hmm. to Nora O'Donnell. That's not who I am. That does not fly with me. See, if I got on a field and I put on pads and I threw around a pigskin, I'm a football player because I'm playing football, not because I'm in the NFL. If you sit in front of a microphone and a camera and you start asking questions and a guest starts giving you answers, guess what? You're doing journalism. Just because you don't work for a network or a newspaper doesn't mean that you're exempt from following all the principles and all the laws that affect us as journalists. You want to get in the game? Fine. Respect the game. I've been playing this game longer than you played yours. I've got some new plays I'd like you to try running. First of all, I was really glad to see Cat Williams give an interview. He doesn't give them often. So the fact that you even thought to interview him... That's excellent. I also thought it was enjoyable. You two had a lot of laughs. He was very interesting. You got at some aspects of his history that I did not know. I'm sorry that that got eclipsed by all the controversy, but he clearly walked in the door with an ax to grind. I also appreciate that you let him speak. I think sometimes interviewers like me will interrupt too much when a guest is laying out something controversial. So the fact that you gave him air is a good thing to an extent. The problem came in the way that you handled that air and in how much you took your hands off the wheel and just let him drive. Rule number one, you're responsible for whatever happens on that show. There were some moments in the interview, Mr. Sharp, that really made me very uncomfortable in terms of how you behaved when he made allegations. There were plenty of situations where he would say something shocking and you would laugh along. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times, just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you Lord got you. to tell him no. Come I, on. I did. I did. Oh, See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. I understand it was funny, and it was funny. But as the interviewer, you're dealing with extremely sensitive information that may or may not be 100% true the way that he said it. So you're responsible in that moment for everything that goes out over your air. And laughing along makes it seem like you both agree with it and endorse it. That's risky. Plus, he had a moment in the interview, I don't know if you remember it, but, well, it made me sit up straight and go, wait, what, say that again? Because in 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing... You would tell it? No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that, I value that, I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know, and they all know it. Did you catch that? I'd pay for that. Does that mean Cat Williams was paying for gossip? That he was paying for negative information on other people in Hollywood, that's really risky. That begins to get into some areas of the law that could get you in trouble. You need to be really, really careful about everything that you allow to be said on your show. Libel, slander, defamation, they can be the subject of lawsuits. And even though you didn't say it, you amplified it by putting it on your platform. More than 46 million people have watched that interview and counting. So you are material to the story of where this information goes from here. You can't take your hand off the wheel. And I know you know how to do this because I saw you when you were a Denver Bronco. But if you played football the way you did that interview, you'd get benched or traded. 
You can't take a passive approach to football. You can't take a passive approach to interviewing. And the fact that you did shows that there's some room for growth there. Now look, I don't know whether Cat Williams' accusations are all accurate or not. I know some folks on YouTube have already shared some videos that corroborate some of his claims, particularly about stolen jokes and misappropriated materials. But some of the other stuff that he talked about in terms of some of the Hollywood casting couch things and sexual encounters, you don't know how to suss that out. And in those situations, you have to protect yourself and your guest. Cat Williams could have just been off on a tear saying things that he overheard or thought he knew in addition to things he witnessed. And it's your responsibility as the host to take the best possible care of him while he's in your space. That's why I was not swayed when you said, oh, but I'm not a journalist. But you're a host and he's a guest in your house. Don't you think every guest needs to be treated with care? Not just the guests that you have, but the guests that you had. You let Cat Williams dog out people who you had already welcomed into your house, onto your show, as guests. So now that Cat Williams has dogged them and you did not stop him, what does that make them? Were they always guests? Are they still? How do people know that you're looking them in the eye right now and you're treating them fine now, but the minute that they leave, someone else could come right behind them, dog them out, and you won't do anything about it? What then? I think your intention was just to create a space for celebrities that you know, your celebrity friends, to have a drink and talk and just have a nice conversation. That's cool. But if you're not gonna do the hard work when the hard work is necessary, then maybe you should leave those conversations to the pros who know how the game is played and who respect it. Personally, I think you should be able to do these interviews. I don't see any reason why you could not. It's just that chunk in the beginning where you let Cat Williams just run wild. That's the part that I'm mostly concerned about, not only for your sake, but for his. What happens if one of his accusations turns out not to be verifiable and he gets in trouble for it? Then you would have created an environment where someone you and I both respect gets brought down on your show, on your watch. Do you want that? Let me say it again, because somebody's gonna get it twisted, so let me just say this again. I am mad at you. I think the only way to grow is to try things that are beyond your skill level, that are beyond your comfort zone, and then you grow into that space after you've done them. It's incumbent upon people like me, who are journalists, to give you some guidance so that the next time you can play stronger. In the spirit of playing like a pro, and because I know that that's your background, I wanna give you three new plays that I think you can call for yourself when you're in this kind of a situation. These are things that I have done as a journalist for the last 20 plus years. I had to learn these the hard way over decades. You can learn them in minutes. And again, I offer these in a spirit of support. Let's call one play downshift. What do they say when you're learning how to drive a car? Speed kills. Same thing in an interview. There were plenty of moments where Cat Williams was ripping through information and just picking them up and putting them down. And he would take one out of this person. And then he called in somebody else. And then Ricky Smiley got another piece. And then this one can't read. And that one tried to do this with me at a party. And on and on and on and on and on. Your correct response would have been, whoa, 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 whoa. Back up. Repeat what he said. Did I get that right? Yes. And whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. Lay it out for me. Make your guest slow down. You're driving. Your guest never gets to drive. They can navigate, but you drive. You'll kind of end up dancing with one another where you'll provide some of the energy and they'll provide some of the energy and you'll go back and forth. It won't feel like you're controlling the interview, but you will have a firm grasp on the wheel. And as long as you're driving, you can go anywhere. Second play. Let's call this one um, bricklayer. Will Smith tells a story in his autobiography where he was helping his father build a wall and the task seemed so enormous he started to complain. His father says, would you quit worrying about the damn wall? Just lay this brick. I want you to lay this brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid. Then lay the next brick and then the next one and then the next one and the next one and pretty soon you'll have a wall. Interviews are much the same way. Your guest may or may not know where they want the conversation to go. You may or may not know because you've got notes, but you know who positively does not know where it's going? Your audience. You have to walk your audience through an interview. They're probably listening to you and they're on their phone and their kids are yelling and the dog is barking and all kinds of other stuff's going on. You have to accommodate for the fact that people are not paying copious, perfect attention to you as the two of you are talking about something, even though it's highly controversial. 
people's minds wander, they drift. You've got an internal monologue where you're like, oh snap, I can't believe he said that. And in that moment, when you're saying that to yourself, you're not listening to the interview. So you have to walk the audience through more deliberately than you think and make sure that your guest finishes one topic before they start building the next one. Lay the wall carefully. Third and final play. Let's call this one five star. It's almost like when you do an interview, you get kind of a Yelp review in the community of your guest. They go back and tell their friends that, oh yeah, I talked to Shannon Sharp. Oh really, what was that like? Oh, it was, what do you want them to say? I learned through being on NPR and MSNBC and NBC News that your reputation grows very quickly when you do good work. Always give your guests a reason to brag on you to someone else. Here's where I think you fell short with Cat Williams. And the reason I had to come is because you made a safe place for the truth to be told. You know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate and that. I have watched all of these lowbrow comedians come here and disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight up lies. <laughs> I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here and lying to you about it. You gonna set the record straight? Are you kidding me? The guests that had been on your show that he took issue with, he got to attack them unimpeded. You didn't say a word. You tried to defend yourself and say, man, I didn't know these things, which, okay, fine. But what about your previous guests? Now what do I think about my experience of having been on your show? Now that someone came for me, it's like you and I never met. Like I didn't help you get some clicks on YouTube and make some ad revenue. My interview was just nothing. You owe your guests hospitality before, during, and after the interview. That five-star review they gave you when they walked out the door has to stand long after the interview. There's a word for that. It's called reputation. And I fear that having Cat Williams on and allowing him to attack those guests without you at least going, wait, 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 hold up. How's that gonna feel on your reputation? If you wanna set a space where people can come and feel comfortable and feel safe and speak their minds without judgment, you have to defend that all the way around. You don't just treat people well when they're there in front of you. Just because the proof emerged later doesn't mean it's okay in the moment without you at least going, hold on, wait, 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 wait. You're saying some very dramatic things about so-and-so. How do you know this? You never asked Cat Williams, how do you know? And even if the answer was, I know because I saw it, I was an eyewitness. You're responsible for making sure that's clear. Don't leave it to the internet to do your work for you. That's like you run a play and then some dude in the stands kicks the field goal. No, you're on the field. They're in the stands for a reason. You asked to be in the game. You asked to put on those pads and to put on that helmet. And that means you get all the glory when you make it to the end zone, but you gotta take all the hits along the way. You never complained about that in the NFL. You're not gonna start now, are you? I think this is an opportunity for a lot of people who otherwise would have been locked out of broadcasting to get into the game. I'm kind of grateful that YouTube allows people like you and me to have these kind of forums. The opportunity for us now is to step into that space with excellence, with greatness, and to shine and to continue to grow. The alternative is to raise up a generation that doesn't know the difference, that doesn't know what quality is, that doesn't know what integrity is or accountability, especially we as black men. We cannot have that. And the fact that you're not a journalist with a capital J with some magical credential from Mount Olympus means absolutely nothing. Lester Holt never finished his college degree. Peter Jennings dropped out of high school, but they're journalists. Why? because they own the responsibility to do great work. Play hard, do the best that you can, keep rising, keep transcending, keep growing, but respect the game. Play like a champion or stay in the stands, but please respect my game. If I can ever be of any assistance, just get in touch. Look forward to seeing what you do next. Thanks for your time.